This video will discuss the electrostatics term in molecular mechanics energy functions. So continuing on with our discussion of the terms in the amber energy function, our last term is the electrostatic term. So for the electrostatic term, this is designed to model the kind of electrostatic interactions between our various atomic particles. Remember, each of our atoms is represented as a single point particle with x, y, and z coordinates. So every pair of atoms is a certain distance apart, and each of them has assigned to them a parameter for their atomic partial charge, usually in units of charge of the electron. Remember, charge of the electron being something like 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs in SI units. Okay, so this electrostatic energy is going to be a sum over all atoms, I equals 1 to n, and then another sum from j equals i plus 1 to n. So these two sums combined go over all unique pairs of atoms. So we have char the interaction of each pair of atoms is charge of atom 1 times charge of atom 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space, times the distance between the atoms. So we have parameters of qi, qj. Every single atom has its own atomic partial charge parameter. And the variable here is the interatomic distance, which can change based off the coordinates of our two atoms. Okay, so what we're familiar with intuitively from electrostatics, if we review some uh, basic physics, is that like, uh, like charges repel one another. Positive and positive are repulsive. Negative and negative are repulsive. Whereas opposite charges attract, positive negative or negative positive result in a net attraction. So what we get here, if we map this out, if we assume we have particles that are oppositely charged, if they were uh, the same charge, the graph would be the same except for it would be a mirror image on the other side of our x-axis here. So we have a weak potential energy at zero. So if they're infinitely separated, we get a potential energy of zero. And then as they get closer and closer together, that charge is either getting either more attractive or more repulsive, depending on the sign of those partial charges. And then it gets infinitely attractive or repulsive as you get infinitely close down to a bond length of zero, or not really a bond length, but an interatomic distance of zero. Okay, so some other factors to bring up. We have the total charge of the system. Typically, we want to choose our charges such that the total charge of the system is going to be zero. Oftentimes in molecular mechanics, uh, what I'll show in the next chapter is we usually have what are called these uh, periodic boundary conditions. And if inside your uh, kind of repeating unit, if inside of there you have a net charge, then very weird things happen and you often get an infinite uh, electrostatic energy. So usually you want your total charge, the sum of all of your charges of all of your atoms, you want that to add up to an electrically neutral system or zero. And as I mentioned in our previous video on van der Waals energies, typically we have a linear number of bonded terms. So the number of uh, bond, bonds, angles, torsions, out of planes scale linearly or less with the number of atoms in our system. And the number of pairs of atoms scales quadratically with the size of our system. So the number of pairs of atoms is n times n minus 1 over 2, which is quadratically scaling. So in the limit of a very large system, almost all of our pairs of atoms are interacting through these non-bonded terms. They're not interacting through these terms if they share a common bond, angle, or torsion. But the vast majority of our pairs of atoms interact through non-bonded terms so in very large terms, in very large systems, uh, non-bonded terms dominate the time needed to compute the energy of our system. All right, so if we look at the kind of non-bonded terms we have, we have a van der Waals term, which depended on 1 over interatomic distance to the 6th and to the 12th, but 1 over r to the 6th is, is slower decaying, so that's what's important here. So the van der Waals term decays as 1 over r to the 6th as our distance is increasing. That's going to decay towards 0 very quickly. Whereas the electrostatic term, that depends on 1 over r to the first power. 
so 1 over r. So that's, as you can see in the, in the uh, crudely drawn diagram here, that's a very slowly decaying function. So we can't use any of the types of tricks that we might think about using for van der Waals, like, you know, cutting them off after a certain radius or things like that, because this function decays very, very slowly, and uh, it ends up being the rate limiting step of most of our molecular mechanics energy calculations because we have those n squared non bonded terms and we can't cut them off due to quick convergence like van der Waals. This slow decay makes it the rate limiting step and we have to include many, many, many pairs of these uh, pairs of interacting charged atoms. Okay, so going to our example as we have throughout this entire chapter, following along from my computational chemistry GitHub repository, we have uh, that cloned and running in a Jupyter notebook here in the top level. In the notebooks directory, I have this CompChem notebook running. What we're going to run it on is going to be this H205 uh, file here. This is what I'm calling an XYZQ file. Again, another file format I just made up. Looks exactly the same as an XYZ file, except for in addition to having the uh, atom type X, Y, and Z coordinate, we also have the atomic partial charge as a uh, fourth additional uh, uh, real number column that's going on here. Okay, and then we're going to read in uh, those parameters and it's gonna figure out all the other parameters and such from this uh, param.py uh, module inside of my uh, molecular mechanics directory. So the dictionary of interest where it's gonna read those uh, van der Waals parameters from, what's the HW, where's that at? HW gotta be somewhere here. Uh, not seeing it at the moment, but let's see if I find OW either. There's OW, so they're the van der Waals parameters for oxygen water. And then the HW is right there, so there are those. So when I run this, I'm going to go up one directory, tab, geometry, tab, XYZ, Q, tab to this H205. I'm going to run and get the molecular mechanics energy on that, running this mm.py script. We find our total energy there, and now we have a non-zero electrostatic term. So we have the geometry of these five water molecules here. Uh, if you open up this XYZ file for these, they actually are arranged in the five of them in kind of a circular ring. So let's see, we have, actually don't have any more information on the non-bonded parameters rather than just what the parameters are, but it ends up that the uh, electrostatic energy there is quite attractive. And notice when your partial charges start to get large, when they start to approach a significant fraction of the electron, these uh, non-bonded terms can start to get very, very large, even relative to our uh, weaker and quicker decaying van der Waals terms.